Well, what an honor it is to introduce once again Gordon Robertson. I think uh, CBN is kind of like one of my, my very favorite ministry in all the world because they do everything with such integrity and excellence, and yet the fruitfulness is off the chart. Uh, Steve mentioned last night that uh, they last year they, they won 70 million to Christ globally. Say 70 million to the person next to you. Come on up, Gordon. And, and I think Gordon leaned over and said it was plus. So I don't know what that means, but 77 million. Give the Lord a hand for that, will you? Let's give Gordon a great welcome. God bless Yay, you, my friend. All the way from Virginia Beach. Yes, yeah, stand up and give him a proper welcome. In, in honor of Heidi, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> so you guys sit down. This is the first time I've preached here where I haven't had to step over bodies. <laughs> I'm not done yet, is what John just said. I'm not done yet. You get that first slide. Also, in honor of Heidi, I brought my PowerPoint. There it is. All right. I got a call from John that he wanted me to come and speak here. And at the time, I was taking a, a break. Um, I've, it's a new habit, but I'm trying to make it a habit. <laughs> oh, turn that one down. I need to see people. That light right there. If we, yeah, thank you. Um, I don't want to see that much glory. Uh, anyway, I'm in... Um, uh, the mountains of Virginia, and I'm um, trying to take a break. I'd been with Catherine and our youngest, and they had gone off uh, to New York, and uh, I was there alone, and it was just a time of prayer, and, you know, let's just disengage from the busyness of ministry, because ministry can get very busy if you let it, uh, and you can neglect your prayer life, and you can neglect uh, the time that you are buying oil, uh, the time that is absolutely needed. And so this was a time for me to do that. And it was also a time for me, I, I love to take walks in nature, and unfortunately I don't get the opportunity. Um, and so there was this wonderful uh, track. Uh, the Jackson River had a railroad beside it, and the railroad was long gone, and they had turned it into this wonderful uh, track. And so me at the ripe old age of 58 decided that I was in fine shape to take an eight mile track. Um, and I actually got through it and, and it was great. I felt great. And I was like, yeah, I still have it. Two days later, I did a six mile, except three miles was up. And at the two and a half miles, it was like, Lord, take me now. I don't want to go home. I, I want to go be with you. Uh, but anyway, on the track, I take that picture, um, which it, it just on, on one of these things, uh, iPhone 6S. And I take that picture, and I come back, and I get the phone call from John. We want you to come and speak. And I go, OK. And then I'm looking at the picture, and I'm going, wow, that's awesome. How in the world did I take that? I mean, it's got this um, wonderful raindrops on it, and then you're seeing right into the heart of the flower, and it's just. I used to have a mic, and now, okay, now I got a mic again. Um, and it's just wonderful. And so it just came to me this is a morning glory. He wants you to speak in the morning, and so this is this wonderful prophetic word for, you know, catch the fire, we're gonna have glory in the morning, and hallelujah. Yay, yay, yay. In the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. All right? Now, Gordon, the Bible scholar, took over, and I had to go research. I had to go look it up. So I looked it up. Next slide. It comes out of Exodus, Exodus and um, it is specifically related for he hears your complaints against the Lord. Now, in ministry, <laughs> no, no, 
It is on. Don't cover the end. How am I supposed to hold? I got big hands. <laughs> In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. Boy, it got quiet. It, it got quiet on that one. And boy, did it ever get quiet for me on the mountain. Because a year ago, God had given me this whole um, ten-part lesson on complaints. And if you look at what the Israelites did on the way to the promised land, they tested him ten times, and each test was a complaint against the Lord. So here, he had delivered them from slavery. They had seen the, the plagues against Egypt. They had seen this incredible miracle of deliverance. They had walked away with the gold and the silver of Egypt. Um, they had seen the Red Sea part. They had seen water come out of a rock. Um, and here they were in the middle of the desert complaining, complaining. And when God gives you a sermon, uh, I've discovered in my ministry, it's usually for me first. And it's how much have you learned this lesson? Um, and I've even complained about sermons that, Lord, do you really want me to preach this again? And his response to me, clear as a bell, was when you get it right. You know, uh, if, if we don't get it, uh, he's going to repeat it. And that's wonderful. Isn't that great of God? He wants to repeat until we get it. He's a good parent. He wants us to learn the lesson. He wants us to be better. Uh, think in, in these terms, who do you want to spend eternity with? Don't look around. Just look, look inside. <laughs> Don't look around. I mean, the person next to you, you're going to spend eternity with them, so you might as well start loving them now. Um, but start thinking of yourself. Do you want to spend eternity with this behavior pattern? Okay. It's getting quiet again. <laughs> you know, and, and the answer is no. The answer should be no that I don't want to spend eternity with this behavior pattern. I want to be like him. I want to keep continuing staring into his word, his life, his presence, so that I get that reflected. Uh, I'm tired of just studying the word. I want to start being the word. You know, I don't want to be an observer of it. I want to do it. And I want that to motivate me from my innermost being. I don't want to have these thoughts that I have to self-correct and go, where did that come from? What's the root of that? Where, where, you know, why, the Bible says I have the mind of Christ. Why am I not thinking like him? What's motivating me? I have his Holy Spirit. Why isn't that being expressed in everything I do? Why does that come out in certain times, certain anointed times, but why isn't that my daily walk? You know, what is that? And I know for me, um, you know, you, you read the scriptures about, you know, we're a, 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 we're a lump of clay and he's molding us. And if he doesn't like what he's molded, he'll crush it up and start all over again. And Jeremiah and the potter's wheel. There's, there's, Jesus has a winnowing fan in his hand. He is the consuming fire. We are to be refined as silver and gold. If you've ever seen that process, it means you get stuck in the fire and burned until all the slag starts coming to the surface. But the problem is that when we get into that process, what do we do? Enough. We're not seeing that it's actually good for us. We're not seeing that, well, it's exactly in that moment of testing, that fire, that just everything seems to be against you. And you want to go to God and say, hey, you're not running the universe right today. I'm, I'm not liking you because of what I'm going through. 
not realizing that this is exactly the time when these behavior traits that are hidden come to the fore so that you can see them for what they are and start seeing them in the light of eternity. Do you want to live with that for all time? And the answer is no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to be like Jesus. I want that to take away. I want, please, burn that off. Get that out of me. I don't want to be that. That's not the Gordon I want to be. And you have to be very honest with this process to say, Holy Spirit, yes. When when you sing all-consuming fire, realize (laughs) there's a whole bunch that needs to get consumed. And what is the process of that for it to get to get rid to to get out? Um, so often um, in the Christian walk, and uh, I've noticed it in our testimonies on the Seven Hundred Club. You know, we have you know we spend a lot of time on the sinful years, and then every, you, know, you get saved, and then happily ever after. You know, now you've had the moment, and you've come to Christ, and now yay, right? Uh, if you're here at 10 o'clock in the morning for a morning seminar, all likelihood you've been a Christian for a while, and you can tell me with assurance that that's not your experience. It hasn't been happily ever after. It has definitely been how many trials, how many things have happened. You've probably experienced some form of persecution I can guarantee you've experienced tribulation. You've been through it. And it hasn't been happily ever after. And you're, and you're looking for why. Now, the story of the Israelites going through the desert is a story for you because it is a type and shadow of the spiritual journey where you see incredible miracles and the first miracle is your deliverance from slavery to sin and it's usually marked by incredible miracles that just awesome things happen the red sea parts just amazing things happen and then suddenly you get into the desert and now what you hear about this heaven you hear about there's a promised land milk, honey, all kinds of good stuff, but you're in the desert, and what do you do? What do you do? If we get the next slide, we, we, we become like the Israelites. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots. We ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Have you ever asked God, why did I get here? What am I doing here? Ever asked that? Why is it quiet? Why? Okay. (laughs) You know, what's... What's happening in your heart at that moment? You know, here the Israelites, they don't remember the slavery part. They don't remember the more bricks and less straw. They don't remember that Pharaoh killed their kids. They don't remember that. They're out there in the desert, they're hungry, they're thirsty, and they think God brought them out there to kill them. Now, is that a loving heavenly father? I mean, it, he's appeared to him. I mean, it's a pillar of fire. It's a cloud, pillar of cloud. It, you know, the, they've had this incredible experience with him, and uh, they don't just complain once. It's twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times he says enough. And that generation, they continue to see the miracles, which I find amazing. 
Um, their sandals didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out, the pillar of fire didn't stop, the pillar of cloud didn't stop, the manna didn't stop, none of that stopped. The provision kept happening, kept happening, kept happening, but they didn't enter the promised land. And he actually waited for all of them to die so that only Joshua and Caleb would be left. And Moses, he said, you can't go in because you struck the rock, you didn't speak to the rock, and it's going to be the next generation that comes in. Ouch. Ouch. You know, we, we have an awesome God, and there's a warning in Hebrews that he is a consuming fire. Um, and for me, I've had to be taught that my complaints trigger this stuff. You ever feel dry in ministry? You ever feel worn out? Are you complaining? Are you complaining? For me, um, I, I, I had a great realization <laughs> on this mountain after this long walk that I've been complaining. Um, that uh, the month before in July, something had happened to me which brought back a whole boatload of memories and a whole boatload of behavior patterns and I had to be caught up short. I'm too mature in the Lord to do this again. I shouldn't have this. This shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be thinking this way. There's a reason that James says, count it all joy when these trials come upon you. Count it joy because what this trial is doing is bringing these things to the surface so that you can get rid of them, that you can repent, you can walk away from them, and they no longer control you. Get the next one up. Um... And, and, and the amazing thing is God still loves us in the middle of the complaint. So he will fill you. He, he will satisfy that complaint. And just like, um, you know, my kids would come to me with complaints. They're still my kids. Um, I'm going to satisfy their complaint. But um, I have found with my children that they can manipulate me a whole lot easier when they come thanking me um, <laughs> and, and telling me what a great dad I am and that it just suddenly changes my heart towards them. And, you know, I, if they come with a complaint, I satisfy the complaint. If they come with, Daddy, I love you, then I start thinking of just incredible ways I can bless them. <laughs> Get the next one. Okay. So this is a question for you. Have you ever complained? And this is another picture I took. Um, it, it was before iPhones existed, uh, and it comes from Israel. I was doing a uh, shoot there, and we were out by, uh, around Galilee, and I noticed these thorns growing and found out that they still to this day call this the crown of thorns. Um, and these things grow wild in Israel, and that's what got stuck on the head of Jesus. Those things are wicked looking. Now, I've gotten close, but those thorns are like that. They're like two inches. So the next time you're complaining, think of Jesus. And think he got that jammed onto his head, and he didn't cry out. He didn't cry out. I'm not like Jesus. I want to be. But you, you take that and jam it on my head. Um, yeah, we're going to have some words. <laughs> we're going to have probably more than words. I'm, I'm going to run out of cheeks real quick. Um, 
But that, um, I, I want that image because so often what we're complaining about isn't anywhere close to this. James says you haven't resisted unto blood. So, you know, Jesus kept his love. I mean, for the very people that were crucifying him, he's saying, you know, Father, forgive them. He kept his love through all of that. It wasn't just he was stifling. You know, he was, you know, keeping it down. He, he was just pouring out love through all of that. I find that just absolutely incredible that he kept his love through all of it. Now, let me uh, go way back in time, 22 years, 20 years, um, and sort of tell you my history with complaints <laughs> um, in ministry. 22 years ago, I'm, I'm the black sheep of the Robertson family. I wanted nothing to do with ministry, just didn't want, ran hard away from it. Um, became a lawyer, practiced law for 10 years. The only good thing I did was I married Catherine. Uh, it got drilled into me. Whatever you do, marry a Christian, marry a Christian, marry a Christian. Um, so we, we, I, I met Jesus on the Godavari River in Rajamundri, which means the city of the king. It's wonderful. Um, in India during the middle of a Shiva festival. Uh, it's the most unusual time to meet Jesus, but in the middle of a Shiva festival, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus appeared to me, and I got a baptism in love, and he, love keeps no record of sin, uh, record of wrongs. He doesn't, he didn't remember a single sin. I mean, it was, it was one of those, you know, where, where you read these verses and you go, how can that be? I knew as I was known. He knew everything about me, and he held nothing against me. There was, there was just outpouring of love. Uh, the closest on, on earth that you get is if a mother is separated from a newborn for a period of time, and that longing, I want to be back, I, I need that baby in my arms. That's what I felt. Oceans and oceans of it. You can't get to the limit. There's no height to it. There's no depth to it. There's no end to it. Just, you know, oceans of love. We talk about rivers. I'm telling you, it's an ocean. Just there's, go take a swim. It's just awesome. Um, and I got called into ministry. And um, within a month, I had quit my job. Uh, within four months, we had, uh, Catherine had quit her job. I, don't, I still don't understand how I convinced her to do this, and we moved everything, uh, sold everything, and then moved to the Philippines because I'd had a series of, of dreams and visions, and um, within a month of this experience, I was smuggling Bibles into China and being with the house church. It was just, talk about dramatic, radical change. Awesome. And in the villages of India, um, I started... Um, seeing these manifestations that were just absolutely incredible. And I'd get up and speak, and the Holy Spirit would just move. This is heavy cloud would come in. And I saw Telugu women who were Hindus get baptized in the Holy Spirit before they were baptized in water and start speaking in Tagalog, the language of the Philippines. Um, uh, every manifestation you can name, whether it's howling or roaring or weeping or laughing, um, one night this guy just touched him and he fell and he was like a bowling ball and he just wiped out chairs and went all the way to the back of the room and it was, that's unusual, I've never seen that before. Um, and uh, I didn't have any reference for that. Um, I'd grown up uh, with Pentecostal charismatic, but I had no reference for that. That was uh, outside my experience. Anyway, um, I'll shorten this story. I, I met miraculously DGS Dina Karn, who is the leading evangelist uh, of his day in India. He was called the Billy Graham of India, and he took me under his wing to teach me how to do ministry and invited me to come and teach in his Institute of Power Ministry. Uh, and I ended up calling him my Indian, Indian daddy, and then his 
dear son Paul became my Indian brother. Uh, Paul's daughter now is working for the 700 Club and going to Regent University. So it's this generational thing where we're just locked in. Um, two years after this incredible experience at the Gadavri River, I'm running CBN Asia in the Philippines and traveling to India to do these Institutes of Power Ministry. I arrive and something horrible had happened to me in, in Manila and um, I, I, I hadn't processed it yet. Um, I hadn't even gotten to a stage of forgiveness. I was still carrying it. And um, DGS saw me and uh, uh, he said, we need to talk. And so he stopped everything and drew me aside uh, into one of the rooms of his house and said, what's, Gordon, what's really going on? And uh, I just, you know, here's, here's what's happened. Um, and he said, well, number one, I need to tell you, it's okay to pour out your complaint before the Lord. And I went, huh? And, you know, I'm sort of Berean, you got to prove it to me in the scripture. So he pulled out the Psalms where David, I poured out my complaint before the Lord. And he said, now, when you're doing that, you're doing it because you know he can answer it. Okay. There's a difference in your complaints. If, if you're complaining like the Israelites, you brought us out here to kill us, that's, that's the wrong way. The right way is, Lord, I can't do this, but you can. And here, and it really released me, um, you know, that it was okay to tell them how unfair it was and how, I mean, if you've ever been slandered in ministry, it, it came really, and there are a lot of things that people can do to you, but that, that one seems to, I don't know, linger. Um, and um, I'll just leave it at that. But um, you can pour that out in front of the Lord, and you'll find he does amazing things to, to help you. Um, and then he said, after, after I poured out my complaint before him, he said to me, well, Gordon... Jesus entered into his greatest ministry after he was betrayed. And I went, wow. And I got some fellowship of suffering going on here. This, this is actually not bad because there's something greater happening if, if I just say yes to it and say, God, if this is your will, then okay. I trust you. I trust you. Jesus became of no reputation at all. I mean, his, his position as king of kings, this is how they mocked him. I mean, they, they spit on him. They beat him with their fists and mocked him. And he responded with love. There, there was nothing impure in that. And just, you know, the awesomeness of this, that if we are in the middle of this trial, we can say, Jesus, I can't do this, but you can, and you did. You've already shown me the way. Help me to walk through this. Help, help me to, to do this with you. Um, some that lesson really helped me in, back in 1996 but here I am 20 years later 2016 and I'm doing it again and once again it's ah and, and I at least know enough to go to him with it but sometimes I know the temptation to not and to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sulk or I'm going to go do other things. And I don't know, what's up with this ministry thing? Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, there's that temptation. 
Um, let's get the next one up. You have to keep in mind in these times that the absolute answer is Jesus. And this isn't some academic exercise. Uh, I'm not preaching some sort of self-help gospel with the 10 steps to overcome bitterness or complaint. This is, I'm talking about the real serious stuff where you don't know what to do. And it's, it's outside of your control. And you need a miracle where you've got to say, Jesus, I can't do this, but he will produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. Every good thing. And it's that power that you appropriate, that, that faith working through love that you appropriate that allows you to then take on his nature and love the way he loves that you're not depending on your own motivation, you're not pre pretend, even pretending to say, well, I'm gonna put on a nice face today and just grin my way through it. Uh, this has got to come from your innermost being. This is a miracle that you get transformed in the renewing of your mind that you start thinking and acting like him. This is something that only comes by spending time with him. So when you're in the middle of it, you need to just, you know, stop, drop, and roll. I mean, just, you know, just get into him because you're not going to do it on your own. Human beings don't do this naturally. Only do it supernaturally. And this is the place where suddenly the blessings start to come. And keep this one in mind. God inhabits the thanksgivings. He inhabits the praises of his people. He tolerates the complaints. Okay? But you want him, in, you want him living with you. You want, him, you want him there. You want him in your heart. And he will inhabit that praise. You don't have to praise him for what's bothering you. Praise him for who he is and how he's able to see you through this and get you through this. Now, the reason, get to the next one because I'm done, I'm done with PowerPoint. <laughs> Heidi says hallelujah. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. I'm, I'm done with it because I, I want to get back to the good stuff, which is in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord. But it's through that transformation where your complaints become praise. Where you, you say, I need to move. When you pour it out, it's not in you anymore. You've let it out. It's gone. You've trusted it to the cross. You've trusted it to that crown of thorns. You've trusted it to him. He's able to take care of it. So whatever wound, whatever resentment, whatever relationship, whatever is going on, you say, okay, I'm done with that, and I'm moving on with him. Uh, I've stopped, I've dropped, I've rolled. <laughs> I've let him take over, and now I get the glory. And now I get the good stuff. I get to enter into his presence where all these questions, all these things literally become meaningless. When I met Jesus, I, you know, you, you grow up thinking, okay, if I get a time to, with God, you know, in heaven, I'm going to ask him some questions. And, you know, what about this? What about that? When you get in front of him, this question is like, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what were you thinking? They all disappear. It all goes away. All you want is him. All you want is him. And you walk into that, he's your reward. It's all about getting him. There's nothing else that matters. You want the glory? Ask for him. Ask for him. 
You want power? You want healings? You want gifting? You want all that? That's for him. He's got all of that. Don't be like the Shulamite, so busy with the gift that you forget him, the bridegroom, with his hair dripping with the morning dew right there behind the latticework, waiting for you to open that door. Waiting, waiting. All about him. All about him. Hallelujah. You guys want to do something? You're going to get a prophetic song. Okay? Who is the guy with the white guitar? I love this guitar, by the way. This is just awesome with the mother of pearl. He disappeared. He went, he went to the side row. You want to do it now? Here's the word I got for you guys that... Um, you're going to get into a greater wave. And this, the whole church needs to be getting ready for this. This isn't something where it's going to be church like usual. There is a greater wave coming. But in this, before that happens, we have to have this, all this slag pulled away. All of that weariness, that complaint, that I'm walking in the desert mentality has got to go away, that you're walking in the glory of the Lord. And all of this is a preparation time for a revealing of the church and a revealing of God's love in ways that we have not seen before. We've had wonderful teachings on the Father's heart. We've had wonderful teachings on forgiveness. We've had wonderful teachings to get us to this point of preparation. But now we need to walk into that fullness and leave all these other things behind. Whatever you don't want with you in eternity, start asking God, get rid of it now. Get rid of it now. I want to be prepped and ready because miracles are going to be commonplace. We're going to see some really dramatic things. I've read the end of the book. We're not there yet. We've got to get ready to get there because he's coming for a bride without spot wrinkle. Uh, we've got to get ready. We say come, but we have to be ready. And the more we're ready, yes, now. Now's the time. All right. We have a white guitar. You going to get that prophetic song? Okay. Then we're going to move into uh, healing. Have you gotten melodies from the Lord before? Yeah. 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 Have you ever put lyrics to them? Not really. All right, I'm going to introduce you to your lyricist. <laughs> because I was just getting strong. God's going to give you so many melodies from heaven. Melodies from heaven. Melodies from heaven. And here's your lyricist. Okay. And so, oh. oh, just before we start this song, I don't know how many of you saw, there was hundreds and hundreds of birds flying by as he was speaking. It was, I've never ever seen that before, maybe thousands of birds. And I just felt like the Lord saying, Matthew 6, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add a more cubit to a stature? Do not worry. Let's all stand up today. I believe that God is breaking off worry. I think there's people here, you're worried about finances or you're worried about what's gonna happen with your kid. You got a prodigal son and daughter or you got this issue or that issue. God is breaking off every complaint. He's breaking off every worry. Because you're all we need. You're all I need. You're all I need, Jesus. When I have you, 
I have everything. Am I enough for you, he says this morning. Am I enough for you, the bridegroom is saying. Am I enough for you? You're all I need. <laughs> You're all I need. <laughs> Just go ahead. You're all I need. You're all I need. You're aligning my life. You're aligning my passion. You're aligning my mind. And all my desire for you, for you, for you. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Every breath that I breathe, it's for you, it's for you, and every day that I live, it's for you. You're aligning my mind, you're aligning my heart, you're aligning my passions, you're aligning my time, you're aligning. every worry, every care, every concern, because I hear the sound of my bridegroom saying, come up here, I'm calling you, come up here. about to go out because the bridegroom is here and the bridegroom is near the shout is about to go out because the bridegroom is here the bridegroom is near and the shout is about to go out get ready by oil now is the time get ready
trumpet is about to resound. The warning is clear. The rock, the call is here. The watchman raising the sound. That the bridegroom is here. Get ready. Get ready. Let your heart be in fire. Let your life be right. Get ready. Get ready. Because the time is here. The time is now. Get ready. Buy oil. Buy oil. Buy oil. In the secret place. Buy oil. Buy oil. Buy oil. oil. Alignment. There's an alignment. An alignment. Just say it to you. Get ready, get ready. The line of the tribe of Judah is coming. You're aligning my mind, you're aligning my time. You're aligning my life. Be first. of complaining I invite you to come forward I'd love to pray for you and just walk free from this so that you're not controlled by it anymore this is the way that bitterness takes hold uh, and that root of bitterness and you just want to get free from it and live free and live in the glory that God has for us and this conference can be the one where you get set free from all of this and realize that He is your reward. He is the one. More, more, more. Just say after me, Father, I just repent. And I turn away from the complaints I've made to you. You are my reward. And I accept everything that you have for me. So Lord, be the refining fire in my heart. Take away anything that is not of you. And anything that doesn't please you. I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. Holy Spirit, come. Without you, I cannot do this. But with you, I can do all things. So Jesus, dwell in my heart. Let me have a mind of anointing that I may think your thoughts 
and do what you want me to do in the world today. I pray it now in Jesus' name, amen. Holy Spirit, come and touch now. Touch, touch, touch. Fill the overflowing. Fill, 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 fill to overflowing. More, more. Ooh.
Lord is prepared to go to the back where there's a little bit more room and people would like to have hands laid on them and impartation, break off complaining and release a cleansing of the Holy Spirit. He's going to make his way to the back and so if you want to line up on the lines, if we've got our ministry team ready to come alongside and agree with what the Holy Spirit is doing here this morning. So again, just make your way along the line all the way around under the flags in the back. Ministry team, if we can be ready, if we can have some catchers as well, please. Coming and assisting, walking along with Gord and other ministry team. Ministry team, if your hands could be up. We get catchers to come alongside. We want to pray an impartation of Stephen, what Gord is carrying in this whole reality that we would have a pure heart, that there be a cleansing and a washing in the inner man. It's like, Holy Spirit, cleanse us. Wash us. Prepare us for the coming of the King. Just as you all make your way, I want you to know two quick announcements. We're going to continue to minister, but at 2 o'clock, everybody is back here at 2 o'clock. We're going to start with worship. 2 o'clock, everybody's back here. Also, for those that have meal plan tickets, there's two places you can go for your meal plan when we dismiss for for lunch, one of the places is in the cafe, the other is in the overflow, which is under the mezzanine. Again, for those with meal tickets, under the mezzanine, the overflow is one spot. The second spot is in the cafe. For those with meal tickets, back here at two o'clock. Holy Spirit, we are hungry for your touch. Lord, cleanse us, wash all complaining out of us. Create in us clean hearts. Jesus' name. the fire pastors catch the fire pastors we'd love to have you come alongside and just help out with prayer ministry here just come along with what the spirit of the god is doing right now and come and bless come and declare life let's release the glory of heaven displace every complaining spirit we want the catch the fire pastors if you're willing to help out please